Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your hostess for the evening, Miss Coco Peru. When I was a little boy growing up in the Bronx in the 70s, there's a little movie theater right up on my corner, and I used to go there, and it was there that I became obsessed with Karen Black. I had seen the movie Airport 75, and really, that's all it took. I mean, I wanted to be stewardess Nancy Prime. In fact, I used to get all the other kids on my block to come over to my house, where we would play Airport 75, and of course, I was always Karen Black. The crew was dead. There's no one left to fly the plane. God, help us, please, help us! Oh, God, I was good. Well then, of course, there was the movie Trilogy of Terror. And of course, that's exactly what it did. It terrified us. I mean, I literally could not walk, piece, walk past a piece of furniture I could not see on track. No, I was so sure a little Zuni fetish doll was gonna come leaping out of me. <laughs> oh, and then there was Burnt Off. In her offerings, Karen plays a woman named Marion, who, along with her family, moves into this old house for the summer. And I guess you could say that the house had a mind of its own. <laughs> and at the end of the movie, after the family has been terrorized by this house the whole summer, and they're finally about to leave, Karen's character says that she's going to go back into the house to say goodbye to Mrs. Allardyce, the old lady she's been taking care of that we have never seen. And ladies and gentlemen, if you leave with anything tonight, let it be this. Never go back into the house! <laughs> she does, and after, you know, she doesn't come back out, her husband goes in to look for her, and he, and he can't find her. He ends up on the third floor at Mrs. Allardyce's door. He knocks on the door, and it opens, and he walks in, and Mrs. Allardyce is sitting there in the corner. But you see, it, it's not Mrs. Allardyce. It's Karen Black, but she's turned into Mrs. Allardyce, and all of a sudden, our husband takes a leap flying out the window. He lands on the car. His face explodes against the windshield, spraying blood all over their young child. Oh, I'm telling you, it was beautiful. And I'm telling you, for the next year, every time my mother came to my room, you know, to tell me it was time for dinner, or, or, or she wanted me to let me know I had a phone call, I would say Karen's last line in the film, I've been waiting for you, Helen. <laughs> but she said Ben, but I changed it to Helen, because that's what I do. <laughs> but anyway, of course, you know, as I got older and I got more into films, I realized and I learned that Karen's career is so much bigger than those three films that I mentioned. But it was those three films that made me first fall in love with this woman. And uh, I always dreamed that one day I would meet her. Well, about two years ago, I was in a vitamin store <laughs> on Ventura Boulevard in Sherman Oaks. I was in an aisle looking for my digestive enzymes. When all of a sudden, I heard this person talking. And I, I mean, I, I couldn't hear what they were saying, but. I recognized the voice. So, you know, I put down the end signs. I, I went down to the end of my aisle, and as I turned to walk up into the next, standing there in front of me was Karen Black. And she looked up and she said, Oh, hello. And I said, Oh, hi. And Karen said, You caught me talking to myself. And I said, Well, that's okay. We all do it. In fact, you know, I do it all the time. And Karen said, well then, it's nice to know I'm not alone. And I said, oh, trust me, you have no idea. <laughs> and then we both smiled. And why? Because we could. I then thanked Karen. I said goodbye. I paid for my digestive enzymes. And I walked out of that store talking to myself. I just met Karen. Ladies and gentlemen, it has taken me two long years, but tonight, 
Another one of my dreams is about to come true. And that's why it gives me great pleasure to be able to say to all of you, as my witnesses, I've been waiting for you, Karen. <laughs> Tap dance. Yeah, exactly. Karen, Karen, you're yes. here. Yes. You know, it's really dark. I can't see anybody except these lovely men just right here. Oh, well, that's all that matter. They came early. Okay. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank well, Karen, you. Thank um, you. Thank we've both been extremely nervous, and I keep telling Karen, you've got 200 homosexuals here to adore you. What's to be nervous? <laughs> I, I want to start off the evening by telling you that I have received, ever since I, I, I let the public know about this evening, so many emails from people out of state that are so sad and so upset that they couldn't be here tonight. So you must be very lucky. And, um, and, and in fact, um, and they, and it, with every single email I got, they not only expressed their sadness, but they would write to me their own Karen Black stories. I couldn't believe, it was amazing to me that people, I, I was so thrilled that people felt the same way that I did about you. And this Thank is you. one that I got yesterday, and I just want to read it to you because it's so beautiful. Okay. Hey Coco, good luck tomorrow night with Miss Black. I'm sure it will be amazing. <laughs> I wanted to share this Karen Black tale with you. Back in the 80s, when Come Back to the Five and Dime, Jimmy Dean, Jimmy Dean was on Broadway here in New York, Karen and Cher and Sandy Dennis, after the show, would all come out and sign autographs and pose for pictures for what seemed like hours nightly. As much as I love Cher and Sandy, Karen would ask every person their name and would personally sign the playbill to them. She interacted with every person there. I was so impressed with her. What a class act. Anyway, have a wonderful time tomorrow. Hugs and kisses, Doug. And then, in order to show you that this is real, he sent me um, a picture of his playbill, and I copied it, and sure enough, Doug, best to you, Karen Black. Thank you. Thank you for reading that to me. That was very sweet. Well, that. I think my favorite comment I ever got was someone who, was, who realized, maybe 10 days later, that Karen Black had been walking their baby in the restaurant. <laughs> well, the baby was crying and they were trying to eat. And I said, well, let me walk your baby while you eat. And so I took the baby and told him about all the paintings on the wall and interested in him, him and the fabrics and everything. And gave the baby back and they were very, very happy, but they didn't know it was Karen Black. <laughs> <laughs> You're a much bigger person than me. I stare at those babies and think, shots of Demerol right now. <laughs> You hate being asked. Oh, wonderful. I hate being asked, uh, what movie do you regret having done? Well, now that you brought it up. <laughs> what's that movie? <laughs> well, I was once reading a script and laughing and laughing. This is the funniest spoof I've ever read. 
dinosaur valley girls, all these like little <laughs> girls running around in their new, practically nude, you know, in their silly little fur things and their fur bikinis. And I thought, oh, this is so funny. Of course I'll do this movie. <laughs> I get to the set and I found out it's not a comedy. <laughs> They really meant it. They really <laughs> thought it was a good story. Oh, no. So I kind of wanted to go home, but I thought, you know, one of my main rules about, about my life, sometimes people say, how come you keep working all these years? And, well, I think one of the reasons is I do my best. I always do my best. So I thought, okay, what, what would it really be like to be uh, a Neanderthal woman? <laughs> Probably not very bright. And, you know, certainly the dialogue supported that theory. <laughs> so I thought, okay. <laughs> Probably a lot of hair. <laughs> and then I thought, no, I have to get the walk. You know, actors all have to get the walk. You've, you've been to these classes. <laughs> Oh, you know, and I really think in the end I was fairly convincing. <laughs> they invited me to go and see the, the uh, you know, the screening. I said, no, I'll stay, I'll stay home. <laughs> Well, I want to, that's wonderful, but I want to ask you, I'm so glad you told that story, and I'm so glad I asked the question. Okay, good. Um, no, I, I, like I like your vicious laugh. <laughs> I, I don't think it's as delightful as your ordinary, but, but can I see it again? The what? The vicious laugh. Oh. It's good. <laughs> you want to see mine? It's sort of like, oh, you have a vicious laugh? Well, you? I don't want to interrupt you. It's sort of, no, no, it's sort of like, it's sort of like what? They want to see your vicious laugh. I want to hear the end of your sentence. It's sort of like what? Go ahead. Okay. She wins. <laughs> <laughs> I hate being... I don't want to be scary. You're not mean. Okay. I, I didn't say I was mean. I said I, I didn't want to be scared. Um, I just want to know a little bit of background. You were born in... Um, I was born. Yes. <laughs> in Illinois? Park Ridge, Illinois. Park Ridge. A small city. And um, we had a wonderful little house, quite modest, two-story white clapboard with red shutters. And we had... Oh, it was really wonderful. Um, we had French lilacs across the front half, and we had white lilacs very tall across the side. And we had a pear tree in the middle of the back, and we had three apple trees, and we had a, a, a screen porch, which was screens on three sides so that you could be in the rain with an apple tree that, that bloomed near us. And we had wonderful times there. And we as your parents? My parents and my brother, Peter and my sister, Gail. And she was Clarice on Another World for 13 years. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Gail Brown. Yes. Very beautiful girl. More beautiful than I was ever. More beautiful than you? <laughs> she was Norwegian, you know. She, I mean, we were the sister. We were both biological, but she took after the, the Norwegian side. She was, you know, natural blonde, and she had all this, you know. <laughs> and I took after the Czech side. <laughs> My mother used to say, because I was very flat-chested and very, very skinny, but my feet grew first. She said, say, you know, Karen, you look like a long drink of water. Anyway, enough of this happy childhood. No, but, but it was a happy childhood. It was happy childhood. Yes, I loved it. And we, we all studied the, the uh, piano. Um, and my great-grandfather was Arthur Ziegler, first violinist for the, Sh for the Chicago Symphony, very famous, Arthur Ziegler. But nobody could play the violin. But... Um, we all studied the piano. But then there's this one song by Rachmaninoff. I don't know if you know it. It goes, bum, 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 that one, you know? <clears throat> and, and your fingers like, bum, 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 and we all quit. <laughs> and when my brother got, he said, silver. We were all quitting when we got to Rachmaninoff. I took piano lessons, and I quit as well. Was it Rachmaninoff? Rachmaninoff? No, it was more like those little Indian songs he used to. 